Welcome back. So in order to see exactly where my uh, remaining movement is in the system, you see here I've got some close-up video there and with the ruler there next to that cross rod and these are the front pulleys there in the keel, you can see I'm getting about a millimeter of movement in that one. So I put that into CAD and a millimeter of movement there on both ends translates to about one tenth of an inch of um, play in the cable. And this is the back one and that's actually even less there. Uh, so, yeah, one tenth of an inch that unless I really try and anchor that one in the front there, I'm probably not going to get rid of that. But I think I can pull most of that out of there uh, just by um, increasing the pretension on the cables. And this is what it looks like there, those ones up the top. And you can see uh, because of that um, offset angle now that I have going to the lower pulleys, that one there is getting pulled to one side. And obviously, too, I think the whole thing you know the whole bracket's just flexing as well so that's uh, my main concern there is to get those ones sorted out and this is the one on the other side and yeah because it's just too much movement going on there so uh, what i plan on doing there is is drilling that um the holes there where that bolt is drilling that through and taking it into both bulkheads and putting a long rod in there uh, in order to pick up that load and this is just showing you beforehand uh, how much movement there is there. So there's quite a bit there. Um, there's a good quarter of an inch or more of movement there when that's going to the either side of the stops. And this is when the aileron's locked. Okay, so what, how I'm going to do this is uh, create a little uh, jig. And just using a bit of, uh, or a whole bunch of pieces you'll see, of uh, FR4. So this is a half inch thick FR4 and just drilling what's going to be uh, the pilot hole there for drilling the hole uh, in the bulkhead and this hole and the other one that I'm going to do right now are for bolting together the various parts of this jig so the jig's basically going to be kind of like a big C shape or U shape uh, that I can bolt in between those brackets there behind the bulkhead and then have an alignment hole of where I can drill through uh, the bulkhead there from the uh, outside, you, you know, basically inside the cabin. So what I'm doing is just match drilling here another piece of FR4 with those same holes that I drilled there. And then I'm also match drilling that hole that's the, the pilot hole for lining everything up for where I'm actually going to you know, be making the drill hole. And now I'm doing the same thing, uh, match drilling what's a spacer block and I need two spacer blocks all together. So this one's uh, two inches uh, wide, and then I need another one that was another half inch, so I ended up with two and a half inches of a spacer block there uh, in between those two brackets that I've already done, or the two bits of FR4. So yeah, um, hopefully this sorts the problem out uh, by anchoring that whole pulley. And of course I have to do both sides, the left and the right. Uh, so you see I'm just still getting this uh, spacer block done here and my drill doesn't have enough travel just to take it all the way through so I've got to sort of step it up there on the platform before I can get all the way through and then finally uh, there I'm doing this little uh, extra half inch piece there which is the one that's underneath there and then I can bolt the whole thing together so that's kind of what it's going to look like with some long um, quarter inch bolts there just hardware grade and then I can uh, you know put that into place around where the um, brackets are for those pulleys so I went and pulled the pulleys out of uh, their brackets there behind the bulkhead and I've got this longer drill bit so when I when I've uh, got the first pilot hole done in the first bulkhead I need to be able to drill all the way through about eight inches of depth all the way so as you can see here this hole there that's going to be my main alignment hole uh, as I said that will be bolted into the um, bracket there that holds the pulley behind the bulkhead and then I'll have a you know a place where I can just line up and drill a hole that matches nicely through and at the same time you'll see in a little bit I'm also going to pull in another two degrees of angle in order to line that pulley up uh, so it matches where that new larger pulley is at the bottom of the keel. So this is what it's going to look like 
now that it's sort of in place so it's on the right hand side of the cabin and you'll see I've taken the pulley out of there and I've got my re regular bolt in there and I've bolted into place I've kept the cable guard there as well because um, the that's pulley um, width is exactly the same width as this half inch FR4 so having the cable guard just helps me space it out nicely and got that bolted into place so that hole there that you can see on the top that's where I'm going to be drilling in there so I measured the angle on this I got about 81 degrees here and I wanted to put two more degrees on it um, leaning backwards so take it to about 79 degrees and so what I did is I just put some blocks behind there and flexed the brackets you know because those carbon fiber black brackets will flex um, and enough for me to do this and so I just put a, a couple of blocks behind there as you can see and now I've got pretty much 79 degrees there I really wanted like two and a quarter uh, degrees so I pretty much got that so you can see I just sort of shimmed it out with a block and and a little uh, shim there and now it's time for me to drill that so just carefully you know not trying to get the bracket to move or twist or anything like that and just carefully just getting the drill there and not even really pushing that hard just letting the drill bit do all the work so I don't go and mess up the alignment on there and just drilling through so this is uh, the bulkhead here has a one inch core in it so I'm going through carbon fiber and then one inch of foam and then more carbon fiber and then there's also another carbon fiber backer plate right behind there that has all the nut plates for all those holes that bolt the doors on here so I'm going through you know three uh, layers of carbon fiber that are about 80 um, 80 thou each and then ultimately you know running into where that bolt is that's holding it there so um, as you can see going through the last bit of carbon fiber there and, and if you look behind there you can see there's the drill bit just you can see the tip of it there in line with the bolt and that was the goal so now I've got a nice matched hole through there I can take the bolt out of the way and take the jig out of the way and I can just take my long drill bit and uh, drill all the way through um, the brackets and go into the back bulkhead which you know is basically um, the main spar as well as the back bulkhead so there's all kinds of layers of carbon fiber going through there and so here you can see I've got it set up on the other side I'm going to do the same thing and just bolt it into place and uh, just drill through that same hole so nothing really that complicated but and this is what I would have done on the keel if I'd had the ability to do it um, on that um, back one but the problem was in the keel even putting a, a quarter inch rod in there was going to flex too much fortunately for this one here the distance between these um, bulkheads here is only about four inches or well, not even that really I think it, yeah, it's only about three and a half inches so um, you know a quarter inch bolt through there is not going to flex all that much um, and when of course when the tension when the tension comes up the pre-tension um, any flex in that should be just uh, taken out and held there uh, by the tension so uh, yeah not really a complicated fix but just a little bit of messing around having to create this fixture and, uh, and put it all together but you know pretty straightforward solution there so yeah I got that through and uh, if you have a look through again there you can see there's the drill bit coming nicely in line with the bolt so that's how that works so again take the bracket out of place and now I can switch over to that long drill bit that I got from uh, Home Depot which is there and you can see I'm gonna keep the brackets in place there um, just because it's difficult to cut them out of there um, with the tools that I have and they're not going to do any harm being in there they'll just help so now I go through uh, what's the face of the main spar and then the core of the main spar and then the back of the main spar and then the face of the back bulkhead here and then the core and then that um, back, back side. So there's basically two sets of, uh, of foam sandwich between the carbon fiber and there. You see my drill bit sticking out there. So got all the way through and now this is the one on the right hand side of the cabin just doing the same thing. So not too difficult and so what I'm going to do here you'll see is I'm going to make some spacers out of FR4 um, for either side of the bracket and that'll stop anything from really flexing that much and at the same time stop it from sort of having the ability to move sideways at all and then hopefully that'll anchor it and it won't move around.
so there's the depth <laughs> I marked on there how long that bolt needs to be and so what I'm doing I was just using a bit of a uh, quarter inch steel here and I'm actually going to probably change this out for 4130 this was stuff that I just had so I'm going to cut those to length and then just thread either end and that way you know I can just put a, a nylock, nylon lock nut on either end there with a washer uh, to hold those in place I'm not really going to you know put any hard points or anything like that into the thing there because I'm just you know wanting to see if this all works first and a lot of work to go and put hard points in there and especially because I'm going through so many layers of carbon I don't think it's necessary um, to put a hard point in there so yeah anyway cut through that real quick with the little cutoff wheel comes in handy and then um, what I did was put a 30 degree uh, taper on the end of these rods um, so it's easy to start with the tap and see. I've already done that one down there. Already put the die on there and put a thread on there. And that one there, as I said, 30 degree taper on there and then just put a little bit of cutting fluid on there, tap magic. And then I can put the die on there and, uh, and put the thread on there. So just a quick way of making a, a bolt to length. I didn't want to you know, wait for some crazy stupid bolt to come from aircraft spruce that was this long it would have cost probably 25 bucks for it per bolt so this is just as easy to make it myself uh, so yeah not uh, not too involved having to do that but as you can see you know come up with a solution for something but you've still got a lot of different steps that have to happen before you can actually put everything together again and so I did uh, both of those things and that's just to check the thread there make sure it works uh, actually that's a nylock nut and then I had another one that didn't have a nylock in it just to make sure yep that thread's good so and I did the other one as I said and so that's what they look like and just to check to make sure that they go through the pulley so it's still a nice snug fit on those ones there so there's not going to be really any sort of wobbling movement between the rod and the bearing inside the pulley and this is what it looks like on the one side there so now that I've got it in place and uh, bolted up you can see it's much better than it was and it's not you know sort of twisting around the way it was before and there's definitely no flex in the axle part of it and this is the one on the other side which I think is even better and so all you're seeing there is just the rotation of the pulley so uh, needless to say I've got the much less movement in the whole system now because of this and it's just a case now of um, getting everything anchored and this is to show you what it looked like before so that's how much movement it had before and uh, so it's quite a lot more than what I have now um, so the next task is to sort of secure everything and before I did that I wanted to check again just to see if there was any movement that I could fix here so I think I put about 60 pounds of pretension on here right now and you can see that these back pulleys are looking really good they're really not moving at all and this one here moves about an eighth of an inch in either direction and again this is with about 60 pounds of pretension um, so as I wind it up more which I did after this um, it actually improved and likewise up the front here not a half the movement they had before around about an eighth of an inch and I think most of that is just coming from cable stretch now because I did the math on there with a cable stretch calculator and and you know what I'm seeing here is about what they predict for the length that I have um, you know from the front all the way out to where the uh, the strake uh, pulley is there in the wing so as I said I can just keep dialing it out more and more by putting more pretension on there and there's not really a lot of uh, um, friction sort of feel in the whole system at all so adding more pretension really doesn't hurt and you know these are the ones up front just to show you there's really not much movement going on here so I'm pretty happy about that so I think this is going to be the solution and I'll just keep dialing up the pretension until it feels uh, about right and just to show you this is how much effort it takes now while I'm sitting in the seat to try and push it to the stop with the ailerons locked and I, I can't actually do it I don't have enough strength to push it to the stop and then going that way is even harder trying to push outwards um, so 
I think this is going to be the solution. And just to show you the difference here of the, of the travel, this is what it looks like with no ailerons locked in place. That's so showing you, you know, going through the full motions. And I think when I recorded this, I had about 80 pounds of pretension. So I left it um, today with 90 pounds, and I think I'm going to, you know, take it up to 100, maybe even 110, and just see how it feels, and then just back it off if it starts to have friction. So the next thing is to go and secure everything. So here I've gone and put the rivets here in that little uh, retaining clip. And uh, this is the, the front wheel uh, up in the keel there. And so I got that bolted back into place. And then likewise, I've gone and done this one as well. And you know, mounted the pulley and put all the spacer washers in there. And likewise, um, you know, connected up the push rod there and put the spacer washers in there. So everything's nice and tight and there's no movement uh, in any of those connections. And this is the one on the other side there, just ready to put that in place. And now that everything's in place, you can see there I've got about 90 pounds on there, maybe 85. Um, but as I said, I'm going to work with uh, doing it some more and uh, taking it a little bit higher. And I also spoke with Justin and he and Elliot are not going to be available until March, probably early March. So I'm just going to get on their schedule as soon as I can for March. And uh, also I won't have a video out on uh, Saturday or Friday uh, because I'm spending the next couple of days uh, in meetings uh, talking about the production plan with um, some people that I've been working with. So you'll have to tune in again on uh, next Tuesday to see how things are going with getting everything back together. So thanks again for watching.